Our protagonist, Turu, encounters a mysterious, alluring witch in an alleyway, leaving him shocked and wide-eyed. Toru introduces himself as a first-year high school student, feeling unnoticed and invisible among his peers. He describes how he's just stuck in the background, often going unnoticed by others even though he's physically there. Toru sits quietly as his classmate obliviously chooses a seat at his desk, unable to see him. He realizes he can't keep living like this and feels a need to assert himself more. Some classmates chat excitedly nearby, discussing a TV drama while Turu looks on, unsure of how to join in. He blames his own lack of courage, feeling like he's fading further into the background, a lost cause. Suddenly he notices someone standing in front of him, startling him. A girl scolds the other students for using Turu's desk, telling them to be considerate of him. The girl, Harunaga Tsumugi, firmly demands, Give it back! Showing her strong, protective side. The guys are startled and realize Turu is there. Turu nervously greets Tsumugi. One of the boys scolds Turu for vanishing on them and tells him to speak up if he's there. Tsumugi defends Turu, telling the others not to blame him. Turu looks a bit confused by her intense support. Turu reflects that Tsumugi is his childhood friend, someone he's known since elementary school. Tsumugi stands out with her bright, cheerful personality, making her the opposite of the reserved Turu. She flashes a warm smile, lighting up the room and leaving Turu in awe. Tsumugi cheerfully hands Turu his desk back, brushing off any thanks he tries to give. Toru thinks about how even his family sometimes forgets him, but Tsumugi always notices him. Alone, Toru walks down the street feeling a mix of emotions, reflecting on his day. Toru laments his fate, feeling like he'll be invisible forever and harshly calls himself waste and chewed up gum. He reflects that without Tsumugi, no one would notice him. Suddenly, he realizes something and exclaims, No, wait! Toru decides he can't stay like this and vows to do something enjoyable to lift his spirits, aiming to break his cycle of pessimism. He spots a stray cat and decides to follow it, feeling excited about his newfound hobby. Toru takes pride in his secret hobby of observing cats, as his backgroundness allows him to watch them unnoticed. Emphasizing his background nature, Toru gets on all fours, fully immersing himself in his cat watching. Toru's hobby leads him to worry he'll one day vanish completely as his background complex grows. Trying to stay hidden, he nervously observes the cat, wondering if it's hiding something. The cat checks if the coast is clear, which makes Toru nervous and curious. Toru is alarmed as a strange, shadowy figure appears behind him, catching him off guard. The mysterious witch stands confidently, her aura intimidating and captivating. Toru is startled as the witch complains about the pain of transforming into a four-legged creature, hinting she was the cat he followed. The witch notices Toru and is equally surprised, both caught off guard by each other's presence. The witch exclaims, A human? Shocked to realize she's been seen in this form. Toru is in disbelief, realizing the cat transformed into a human. He questions her outfit, which resembles a witch, wondering if she could really be one. The witch frantically yells for Toru to wait, as if she's losing control of the situation. Toru, still on the ground, stares in awe, thinking to himself, A witch? Suddenly, a magical transformation starts, surprising Toru as she begins to change again. The witch transforms into a childlike version of herself, leaving Toru stunned, exclaiming, A kid? as she expresses frustration about the transformation. Toru discovers that if a sorcerer's true identity is revealed to a human, they lose half of their magic. Toru realizes that this mysterious person is indeed a witch, who blames him for her current, pathetic form. The witch declares that since Toru knows her true identity, she won't let him get away without consequences. Toru panics and apologizes. Toru pleads for his life, desperate to avoid any punishment. The witch surprises him by offering to use her magic to grant him one wish. Confused, Turu wonders why she's suddenly offering to fulfill his wish. She explains that granting a wish to the human who discovered her identity is the way to break the curse. With a serious expression, she tells Turu he can ask for anything, fame, fortune, or whatever he desires. The witch urges him to hurry up and make his wish, but Turu hesitates, saying he needs a moment to think. Finally, Turu contemplates his wish as the witch watches expectantly. Toru is scolded by his teacher for always disappearing during class, leaving him stammering and unable to defend himself. Another student points out that Toru is always reliable, even bringing the red chalk for the teacher before class. The girl smiles warmly at Toru, reassuring him, I can see you just fine. Toru, feeling emotional, starts to respond but stops, overwhelmed by her kindness. Toru refers to himself as an invisible person, as the witch listens, confused. He reflects on how he feels invisible, weak-willed, and always in the background, struggling to find redeeming qualities. Toru thinks to himself, wanting to be someone who isn't invisible, and wishing he had the courage to confess to his crush. He admits he feels hopeless, believing he can't change even if he dislikes his loneliness. He's unsure what the witch's magic can do, but wants to try. Toru makes his wish, asking the witch to help him change and be noticed. The witch, skeptical, asks if he's really sure about his wish, suggesting she could make him rich instead. Toru looks uncertain, but the sorcerer urges him to make a genuine wish. 
The sorcerer tells Toru that a wish from the heart is needed to break the curse. The sorcerer playfully announces their first task, investigating Harunaga-san, Toru's crush. They spy on Harunaga-san who's chatting and smiling with friends. The sorcerer reassures Toru, saying he's being too hard on himself. Toru protests and the sorcerer suggests using charming magic to win over Harunaga-san. Toru freaks out, insisting that brainwashing isn't the answer. The sorcerer acknowledges Toru's desire for self-confidence and offers a solution. The two share a tense moment as Turu prepares himself. Suddenly, a giant, menacing figure looms over them, signaling a new challenge. Toru is bewildered, staring at the massive creature in front of him, questioning its bizarre, apocalyptic look. The sorcerer explains it's a golem she created with magic. The sorcerer bluntly suggests that Turu take on the golem in front of Harunaga, making himself look impressive, but he's terrified and immediately refuses. She reassures Turu, saying they'll make it look good. She tells him to take a swing, assuring him the golem is weak, just like soft tofu. Toru tries to punch the golem with full force, but it doesn't budge, leaving him and the sorcerer staring in awkward silence. The sorcerer, unimpressed, calls Toru a wimp as he barely manages to tap the golem with his fist. Frustrated with Toru's lack of strength, the sorcerer scolds him, saying even a hamster has more fight in it. Toru whines, saying he hurt his wrist. The sorcerer orders the golem to attack anyway, ready to improvise. The golem starts running off in the wrong direction, leaving the sorcerer confused. She yells at the golem, trying to redirect it toward Harunaga, but it doesn't seem to listen. Finally, the sorcerer admits she doesn't have enough magical power to control it, leaving Turu in disbelief. The golem starts running towards some schoolgirls walking home, causing them to scream in fear. The sorcerer observes it losing its shape. The sorcerer looks concerned, explaining that if people find out the golem was made with her magic, it could expose her as a sorcerer. Toru panics as the sorcerer explains that overlapping curses could drain all her magical power, leaving her completely annihilated. The sorcerer casually adds that Turu's guts might also spontaneously explode, causing him to freak out even more. Turu demands to know why his life is also at risk, but the sorcerer says their fates are intertwined. He has no choice. Toru begs her not to do things she can't control since his life is at stake. The sorcerer admits she underestimated the curse's effects. The sorcerer suggests a slow recovery process, but hints at another way to regain her magic quickly. Turu asks her to do it immediately. The sorcerer awkwardly admits she can't recover her magic right away after all, leaving Turu in disbelief. As the golem looms near the girls, Turu anxiously asks what they should do. The sorcerer stays silent. Turu debates running away to avoid exposure of the sorcerer's powers, but hesitates, worried about the consequences of fleeing. The golem lumbers towards some school kids, causing them to scream in terror as it begins to lose its shape. The witch worries that her cover will be blown if people realize the golem was made with her magic. Toru panics as the witch explains the curse could lead to her losing all her magic and being annihilated. The witch adds that Toru's guts will also spontaneously explode if things go wrong, making him freak out even more. Toru is stunned by how their fates are intertwined, adding to his fear and confusion. Nervously, Toru asks the witch not to risk her life on things she can't control. She admits she underestimated the curse's power drain. The witch explains that she could wait for her powers to recover naturally, but it might take a while. Toru looks desperate, realizing there's no quick fix for her powers. She confirms she can't restore them instantly. The kids walk off, leaving Toru to wonder what to do next, feeling the weight of their predicament. Toru starts to think of running away, but his worries about the witch's exposure prevent him from leaving her to handle it alone. Toru reflects, noting that being over the top isn't always a bad thing. The witch acknowledges Toru's backgroundness, saying it helped avoid unnecessary panic. She even calls his backgroundness a redeeming feature, giving him an unexpected compliment. Toru, overwhelmed, realizes it's the first time anyone has ever said something like that to him. Suddenly, they remember the golem and the mess they need to clean up. The witch instructs Turu to close his eyes, urging him to hurry. Unexpectedly, the witch kisses Turu, catching him completely off guard. Shocked by the kiss, Turu struggles to process what just happened. The witch casually tells him the kiss restored her magic as its common knowledge. She explains that kissing can convert physical power into magical power, which sorcerers use in emergencies. Harunaga-san insists on another kiss to restore her magic since she used it up right after replenishing. Toru panics, saying he's not good with kissing and wanted his first time to be special. He blushes and looks confused, overwhelmed by the situation. Harunaga-san stands confidently, mentioning she gave Toru courage as he wished. Toru, flustered, admits he might have gained some confidence, and Harunaga-san kisses him again. During the kiss, Toru freaks out internally, noticing her eyelashes and soft skin but tries to endure it. Suddenly another girl appears and calls out Toru's name, catching him mid-kiss. Toru freezes, shocked as the other girl asks, What are you doing? Harunaga-san calmly acknowledges the situation but Toru is left sweating nervously. Harunaga catches Toru off guard, questioning his behavior. Her sudden appearance surprises both of them. Toru overthinks the situation, spiraling into a panic about how Harunaga might misunderstand everything. Harunaga looks confused while Zara and Turu try to play it cool, hiding their earlier actions. 
Harunaga asks if Zara is Turu's childhood friend, and Zara confidently introduces herself as Turu's cousin. Zara cheerfully explains she's visiting her cousin's house, leaving Harunaga slightly puzzled. Zara points out something on Turu's face, saying he has dirt on his eye, pulling everyone's attention. Harunaga leans in close to check Turu's eye, making him visibly nervous and flustered. Zara quickly brushes off the situation, saying it's all fine, and the group decides to leave. Harunaga walks away, reflecting on how Turu seemed unusually awkward today. As she walks, Harunaga struggles to shake the feeling that something is off about the whole situation. Toru is lying on the ground after an unexpected situation. Harunaga looks shocked as she notices his state and calls out to him. Toru wakes up in his room, looking disoriented. He sits up, processing everything that just happened. Toru thinks everything was just a dream. He wonders if the witch, the magic, and the wish were all part of his imagination. Suddenly, the witch appears beside him. She casually remarks that he's finally awake, startling Toru. Toru realizes the witch is real. She teases him for still being drowsy while he tries to wrap his head around the situation. The witch explains that recovering her magic has allowed her to regain more of her true form, showing a confident and powerful demeanor. Toru is startled by her appearance. She confidently states her form is now closer to Toru's age, leaning in closer to him. The witch moves in closer, pinning Turu against the wall. Her teasing tone becomes more intense, making Turu panic. Turu tries to push her away, but she smirks, clearly enjoying his flustered reaction and making her presence even more overwhelming. The scene ends with Turu struggling to figure out what to say or do, leaving the tension between them unresolved. Uru looks startled as the witch leans in closely, offering a suggestion that her current form might be more enjoyable. The witch laughs teasingly, explaining that replenishing magic through a kiss is necessary, leaving Turu blushing and frustrated. Toru, hiding under a blanket, awkwardly questions if the curse can be broken without her growing stronger or changing forms. The witch conjures a magical glass, starting a detailed explanation of how witches' powers function from childhood. She compares the glass to a vessel that holds magical power, emphasizing that it can be refilled but spills unless the curse is fixed. The glass shatters dramatically in her hand, symbolizing the difficulty of retaining power with the curse still in place. The witch concludes that breaking the curse requires sealing the crack in the vessel, alluding to her reliance on Turu's cooperation. She states bluntly that regaining her full power necessitates a kiss, causing Turu to look visibly nervous and conflicted. The witch teases him further, asking if he's okay with his first kiss being with someone like her, pushing him into reluctant agreement. Sitting casually, she mocks Turu for being physically weak, telling him to toughen up before next time, while he awkwardly reacts. The witch teases Turu, asking if he hated the idea of kissing her that much. His nervous expression gives away his flustered state. Toru stammers and panics, admitting he doesn't hate it but doesn't particularly like it either. His face is bright red from embarrassment. The witch encourages him to make a choice, mentioning that confessing to Sumugi might be his way forward. Her tone is serious yet supportive. Toru contemplates the risk of confessing to Harunaga-san, fearing a change in their relationship. He refers to himself as garbage for being so nervous. The witch questions why Toru hesitates, playfully challenging his indecision. She seems slightly exasperated by his self-doubt. Toru resolves not to manipulate the outcome of his confession using the witch's powers. He values sincerity, despite his fear. The witch looks surprised and flustered as Turu indirectly rejects using magic to solve his problems. Her expression shifts to disbelief. She reminds Turu that lifting the curse requires it to align with his true feelings. Otherwise, the curse won't break, even if the conditions are met. The witch pushes Turu to think differently, asking if he truly wants to confess and face rejection. She encourages him to approach the situation confidently. With determination, she suggests flipping the script entirely. Instead of confessing, he should make Tsumugi confess her feelings to him. Zara sarcastically teases Turu telling him he won't need to be frustrated anymore. Toru panics, denying it fierce. Toru, flustered, insists that there's no way Harunaga would ever confess to him. He's overwhelmed by self-doubt. Zara criticizes Toru's negativity, stepping closer to intimidate him. She calls it a perfect wish for a witch. Zara confidently declares herself as the witch who will transform Toru's timid and subservient personality into something bold. Toru reflects on his failure to muster courage to confess. He questions his overly timid nature with visible regret. Zara's expression softens as she listens to Toru. She offers to guide him even if he feels scared and turns back again. Toru nervously declares he'll do his best to make Harunaga fall in love with him, introducing himself as if starting anew. As they sit on the bed, Zara explains her nickname is easier to use compared to her real name, which she implies is more complicated. Zara gives a sly smile, wishing Turu luck and humorously suggesting they postpone brainwashing for now. Turu awkwardly agrees. Zara shifts the topic, asking Turu about his family now that they've clarified his final goal. Turu seems caught off guard. Zara is surprised to hear that the boy lives alone, as his parents are abroad. She envies his freedom. Zara mentions how convenient it is that she doesn't have to use magic to fake being family since he's alone. The boy nervously asks why Zara doesn't just stay at her own house, but she insists it's logical to live together. Zara explains that traveling between the human world and the witch's world requires magic, which she's currently too low on. 
She's embarrassed about her childlike form and doesn't want other witches to see her in such a state. Zara declares she'll sleep there to recover her magical power, much to the boy's shock. The boy tries to reason with Zara, suggesting she sleep in a different room. She teases him with a cute reaction. Zara lies in bed, casually demanding to be woken up for dinner. The boy is baffled by how quickly she falls asleep. While Zara sleeps, the boy reflects on the strange situation of living with her and wonders what lies ahead. Zara shifts in her sleep and the boy gets flustered, accidentally glimpsing more than he intended. Morning arrives and Turu feels overwhelmed. His heart races as he reflects on the previous night, leading to a restless mood. Toru at school, looking exhausted, he admits he couldn't sleep at all with Harunaga sleeping nearby. His face shows a mix of embarrassment and regret. Classmates mention Harunaga. One of them casually asks Turu if he's heard about her. This makes Turu panic, though he tries to brush it off and stay calm. Turu overhears shocking news. Another classmate mentions seeing Harunaga walking with a boy yesterday. Turu's mind spirals, feeling worthless and insecure. Turu's face freezes in disbelief. The realization hits him hard as he processes the comment about Harunaga possibly having a boyfriend. Zara stands confidently, showing off her new outfit. She looks determined and powerful. Toru processes the information about Harunaga walking with another boy, feeling conflicted but trying to make sense of it. Zara misunderstands Toru's explanation, thinking he wants her to eliminate the competition. Toru panics as Zara calmly suggests erasing the disturber, her tone casual but her intentions intense. Zara changes the strategy, suggesting Toru should take matters into his own hands and keep the other guy away from Harunaga. Toru notices Harunaga walking with Rindu. Zara seems ready to intervene, but Toru hesitates. Rindu is introduced as a charming and confident classmate, immediately drawing attention from everyone around. Zara, hiding with Toru, points out that glaring at Rindu won't solve anything. She looks amused by Toru's flustered state. Toru describes Rindu as his polar opposite, a guy who easily stands out and captures everyone's attention effortlessly. Zara calls Turu's name, her tone serious. Turu, startled, turns to her, unsure what she's about to say. Zara's sister surprises Turu with a sudden kiss. He's left speechless as she confidently makes her move. Zara's sister pulls away, giving Turu a sly, knowing look, clearly pleased with her actions. She explains it was to ensure his magical energy, but Turu's flustered reaction shows he's not convinced. Meanwhile, she readies herself for a confrontation, her confidence radiating as she prepares to meet someone significant. With a dramatic flair, she declares her readiness, her stylish appearance leaving Turu both impressed and nervous. Harunaga calls out to Turu, her cheerful voice breaking the tension as they regroup for their walk home. Toru introduces Zara's sister, who warmly greets everyone as Zana, making a bold impression on the group. The group discusses Zana's relation to Zara, with some confusion and surprise at her unexpected presence. Rindu suddenly appears, startling Toru, who realizes he had been present the whole time unnoticed. Toru stammers out a greeting to Rindu, clearly caught off guard as the situation becomes more complicated. Harunaga nervously denies the implication, explaining that she and Rindu are just neighbors and classmates, meeting coincidentally during the school ceremony. Zara, looking frustrated, blurts out a dramatic statement about the heroine's losing root, clearly annoyed at how things are progressing. Toru looks confused as Zara continues her exaggerated complaints, breaking the fourth wall with remarks about characters and tropes. Zara bluntly calls Harunaga the naive childhood friend, claiming she can't compete with Rindu, the charming transfer student. Zara makes another dramatic comparison, likening Harunaga's situation to being outshined by a handsome thief. Meanwhile, Toru looks embarrassed. Rindo calmly clarifies that he's merely Harunaga's neighbor and that their interactions are coincidental trying to defuse the situation. Rindu adds that they simply walk to school together since it's on the same route, delivering this explanation with a charming smile. However, Rindu's tone changes as he cryptically adds, For now? His serious expression hinting at a hidden intention. Toru looks shocked, piecing together the realization that Rindu might actually have feelings for Harunaga. Toru acknowledges Harunaga's popularity, reflecting on why he shouldn't be surprised about the attention she gets. Rindu sparkles as he stands close to Harunaga. Toru labels himself the villain compared to Rindu's shining presence. Zara confirms Toru is not Harunaga's boyfriend. Toru proudly acknowledges having Zara, which surprises Harunaga. Zara boldly asks Rindu on a date, leaving everyone shocked and stunned, including Harunaga and Toru. Zara playfully questions Rindu's interest in older women, catching him off guard. Harunaga watches the interaction intently. Rindu agrees to the date with Zara, leaving Harunaga and Turu in disbelief. Zara celebrates her victory. As they walk away, Harunaga expresses admiration for Zara's unique beauty, hinting at a mix of jealousy and awe. Toru sees this moment as an opportunity to be alone with Harunaga, though he wonders about Zara's influence over Rindu. Zara confidently assures Turu that it's okay to deal with disturbances, giving a thumbs up while he looks horrified. Toru struggles with the dilemma of leaving Harunaga alone but decides to chase after the others, saying saving a life is more important. Harunaga grabs Toru's hand, stopping him. He blushes at the sudden physical contact, clearly flustered. 
Harunaga clarifies that Rindu isn't her boyfriend, making Turu stammer, unsure how to respond. Harunaga dashes off, apologizing for causing trouble, leaving Turu awkwardly saying goodbye. Toru ponders why Harunaga acted strangely, noticing how tightly she gripped his hand earlier. Toru rushes to catch up with Zara, worried about what she might be doing. Rindu, visibly disoriented, realizes his magic has worn off and he's completely out of energy. A younger-looking girl calls Rindu big brother and mischievously invites him to hang out. Rindu is utterly confused and terrified. Rindu looks shocked as Zara smirks confidently. Her playful, almost mischievous expression suggests she's planning something. Toru pulls Zara back, restraining her before she can act. He shouts, It's not worth it! While Rindu looks confused and panicked. Zara argues with Toru, claiming she hasn't done anything yet. Toru defends his actions, saying he couldn't risk Rindu getting hurt. Rindu seems caught in the middle. As Rindu walks away, Toru looks relieved and mutters, He got away! For now, Zara seems unbothered, glancing over with mild disinterest. Toru questions himself, wondering aloud if he made a mistake. His worried expression hints at self-doubt after the recent events. Zara teases Toru, pointing out his smaller size. Toru looks horrified, realizing she's referring to some magical transformation he's undergone. Zara reassures Toru that the curse isn't an issue this time, but her relaxed attitude doesn't seem to ease his concern. Toru, visibly sweating, protests. Zara flashes a cunning smile, announcing she has a new plan. Turu warns her about the dangers of using magic openly, but Zara brushes it off, comparing it to telling a fish not to swim. Zara tells Turu to head home, saying she needs to prepare for what's next. Turu looks hesitant and confused, but he reluctantly agrees. As Zara slyly says, After you've given me my fill, Turu's face flushes with embarrassment. Her teasing remark leaves him visibly flustered and unsure how to respond. Zara tells Turu to crouch down, signaling him to come closer. Turu looks visibly embarrassed, thinking about how Zara is about to kiss him again. Zara's face looks serious as she gets ready to kiss him. Toru seems nervous, while Zara glances at him intently, seemingly determined. Toru reluctantly agrees, and Zara jokingly asks if he's acting like a samurai ready for seppuku. Zara leans in, playfully saying a clean kiss is good. Zara plants a kiss on Toru, leaving him blushing and flustered. Zara pulls away with a satisfied expression, and Toru looks stunned by the sudden kiss. Zara thanks Toru, calling him a good boy as she prepares to leave. It's the next day, and Toru walks into the classroom. Zara decides to take Toru home, saying she might have overdone it a bit. Toru looks anxious. He's thinking about Zara not coming home the previous night, which worries him. Toru continues to fret, wondering what Zara is planning since she said she'd prepare something. A group of girls screams in shock at something, capturing Toru's attention. Rindu appears, looking calm and collected, and the scene shifts focus to him. The girls in the class are fawning over Rindu, admiring his appearance and calling him a knight in shining armor. Toru is sitting at his desk, frustrated because someone is leaning against it, clearly feeling ignored. Rindu reflects on what he witnessed regarding Zara's transformation. He's questioning Zara's assurance that everything is fine. Toru is lost in thought, recalling Zara's warning about the danger of being cursed twice. He's worried that Rindu might expose her. Toru, sitting at his desk, wonders if it's true that he could die if Zara gets caught, his anxiety growing. Toru is shocked when he sees Rindu standing confidently, staring at him. Toru is nervously trying to address Rindu, but Rindu just keeps looking at him in silence. Rindu walks past Toru, ignoring him as Toru watches nervously. Toru observes Rindu and two other students walking through the classroom, seemingly looking for something. Rindu heads towards the seating table. Rindu aggressively confronts Toru, yelling, I finally found you! Toru is taken aback by Rindu's intensity. Rindu demands to know about Toru's cousin, Zara. Rindu seems agitated, claiming that he saw Zara turn into a child. Toru is shocked by this. Rindu questions why Toru is associating with Zara, mentioning all the things Zara has done. Toru is visibly confused, trying to process what Rindu is saying. Rindu, clearly frustrated, insists that he remembers Zara turning into a child. Toru, however, denies knowing what Rindu is talking about, hinting that it might be a dream. Rindu looks frustrated, yelling about his fangirls not noticing him because of that woman. Toru apologizes, admitting it might be his fault. Rindu is visibly disappointed, saying even if he tries, he can't seem to stand out. Toru thinks about how Rindu's aura always outshines his. The teacher announces a transfer student, telling everyone to take their seats. Turu seems confused. The transfer student's arrival caproots everyone's attention. The transfer student introduces herself as Sazarashi Zarami, and Turu looks stunned by her appearance. Rindu and Turu both react to the new student. Rindu questions if it's really Zara. Zara suggests her seat should be next to Turu. The teacher agrees. Uru asks Zara why she's at school and even being a transfer student. Zara just casually says, yo. Zara explains her plan to become Turu's classmate, thinking it would be helpful. Zara gets close to Turu, declaring she'll be in his care, with her fangs showing, while Turu looks extremely nervous. 
The narrator declares, The witch Zara has become a classmate. Turu is in shock, questioning why this is happening. Zara casually mentions that this is her first time at a human school and wonders if their first lesson is math. Turu awkwardly mumbles something while she states she'll probably sleep during it. Zara gets surrounded by classmates, who bombard her with questions and offers to show her around. Some even ask her to join their line group. Zara gives the group a deadpan look, simply saying, What? The eager classmates look visibly scared and taken aback. The classmates retreat, apologizing and saying they were a bit too eager. Zara is left alone, staring at them as they walk away. Toru suggests Zara should be friendlier since everyone is scared of her. Zara bluntly responds that she's not a friendly person. A flashback shows Zara smiling sweetly in front of Harunaga. A friend teases her about acting like a Nico Nico character. Zara complains that doing that at school would wear out her facial muscles. Two students talk about Zara, feeling a little dejected. One comments on her disdainful eyes while the other agrees that it stung a bit. They continue talking but admit that on second thought, Zara's demeanor might actually be kind of cool. The panel compares Zara and Harunaga, with each having their own charm. Zara, labeled as the cold-blooded queen, is seated regally, while Harunaga is referred to as the saint of charity, showing their contrasting vibes. Tsumugi apologizes to Turu, feeling overwhelmed. Zara casually acknowledges it. Tsumugi seems curious about Zara and asks if she knows her. Zara tells her not to worry and that there's no need to apologize. Tsumugi starts piecing things together, wondering if Zara is related to the others, possibly sisters. Zara just rolls with it. Zara moves in closer to Turu, holding him by the shirt while Tsumugi watches from a distance. Tsumugi says there's someone who can properly take care of Turu, hinting it might be her. Zara suggests that people should look with their heart to understand Turu, making him feel awkward. Tsumugi laughs at Zara's comment about Turu. Tsumugi says Turu looks like he's having a lot of fun with Zara and Zana. Turu looks surprised and confused as he doesn't feel like he's having fun at all. He thinks to himself, do I look like I'm having fun? Clearly unsure about the situation, Zara looks surprised as someone extends their hand toward her. Tsumugi is smiling warmly and says she hopes they can get along. Zara responds with a grin, agreeing, but only if they're willing to be friends. Zara casually says, we'll get along well, while Turu, looking uncomfortable, thinks it's good nobody noticed for now. Tsumugi waves goodbye. They shake hands in a mutual agreement. Toru watches them in shock, thinking, what's going on here? Zara seems skeptical, questioning Turu about spending time around so many people, considering it a high-risk situation. Turu seems embarrassed as he looks at Zara from across the classroom. Zara's eyes are narrowed, seemingly evaluating the situation. Zara plans to observe Turu in school first, before deciding if she will help him with Tsumugi or improve his confidence. It's during the lunch break, setting the scene for the upcoming conversation. Zara looks worried, asking Turu if he's being bullied. Turu quickly denies it, looking stressed. Toru explains that in middle school, whenever he wrote something on the blackboard, it was treated as a mystery. The teacher would also ignore him when he raised his hand, which Zara sees as bullying. Toru admits he feels bad, but he's happy that Harunaga notices him. On the other side, Tsumugi always points out when the teacher skips Toru, showing she cares too. Zara plans to make Toru more transparent, implying helping him fit in better or improve his presence. Zara confidently tells Turu she wants him to stand out in the class. Turu looks a bit unsure, asking how she'll do that. Zara smiles and says she's got an event planned for today. She seems excited. The scene shifts to the students, who look a bit puzzled. One of them goes, eh? The teacher announces that they will be picking committee members for today's homeroom. If more than two people apply, it'll be decided by rock, paper, scissors. Harunaga seems confused, asking if the committee selection is the event Zara was talking about. Zara looks determined. Zara encourages Harunaga, saying this is his chance to become a class representative. Harunaga is clearly overwhelmed, exclaiming, Huh! The teacher announces that three students are running for class president, but only two spots are available. A girl confidently says that being class president is like being the boss. The girl encourages the boy, mentioning that Tsumugi was also nominated and that this is his chance to stand out. The teacher asks if Sazarashi wants to be class leader, but he says he's just supporting Magura. Harunaga looks frustrated while the other character mocks him. Harunaga yells in frustration while the other character teases him about looking pale. Harunaga waves charmingly, and the girls in the class swoon over him. Harunaga enjoys the attention and taunts the other boy, who looks annoyed. One student is confused about who the third candidate is. Sazarashi feels overwhelmed and thinks about stepping down. The group realizes Turu quietly returned to his seat and they laugh while preparing to continue. Mugura comforts Turu, reassuring him that winning rock, paper, scissors is all that matters. Mugura slyly promises to make sure the opponent throws rock. The opponent seems confused while Turu looks unsure about making the opponent throw rock. The teacher initiates the game and Samugi wishes them both good luck. Tension builds as they prepare for rock, paper, scissors. Both players reveal their hand signs, one with scissors, the other with rock. The opponent is surprised and Magura feigns innocence, questioning what they mean by you said rock. 
Mugura continues teasing, suggesting the opponent misunderstood her plan. Mugura grins mischievously, denying she had any real influence. She's not a witch, after all. Rindo leaves in frustration, saying he won't forget being tricked. Mugura laughs, explaining how Rindu actually believed her plan. Turu ponders if this means Rindu believes Mugura is a witch. Mugura calls out to Turu, surprising him. Harunaga is happy they both got chosen as class presidents. Turu nervously agrees. Now officially class president with Harunaga. Time skip to a few days later. Turu is slumped over his desk, looking defeated. Mugura asks why he looks so down, comparing him to a moss-covered stone. Turu explains he's struggling with his responsibilities and feels overwhelmed. Turu feels ignored as everyone struggles to notice his presence. Harunaga looks resigned, mentioning she still needs to do the work since she's class president. Harunaga apologizes to Turu, admitting she made him president to help him, but feels she failed. Turu immediately denies that it was a failure, insisting it wasn't her fault. He confesses that despite not being great at his duties, he enjoys working with Harunaga. Harunaga questions why he thinks positively about his situation, which seems like a bad thing. Toru explains how his classmates now recognize him, which makes him feel proud. He thanks Harunaga, expressing his gratitude for making him class president. Harunaga is a bit surprised by his gratitude, while Toru reassures her that she didn't fail. Harunaga calls him an idiot for always thinking negatively, while he asks if that's really the case. The girl with pointed ears looks amused as she covers her mouth. Turu looks a bit embarrassed, standing behind her. Harunaga is approached by someone calling her Oju-san, asking if he can ask her something. She agrees. The stranger asks if she has seen Zara, mentioning that she's in this school. Harunaga denies it, saying Zara is not in this school. Harunaga mentions Zara's sister, Zarami, to the stranger, who seems curious. The stranger, who reveals herself as Zara's friend, asks for Zarami's whereabouts, smiling confidently. 